Okay, let's look at a couple of examples of the types of calculations we'll be doing with the double slit experiment. And real quickly, let's, let me remind you of the equations we had from the last video. D sine theta equals m lambda. M was the number of the fringe, the, sometimes we call it the order of the fringe, like a first order fringe. Lambda is the wavelength of light coming through the slits. D is the spacing between the slits. And lambda is the angle from the line, I don't know if I talked about that too much, so here's our double slits. If you draw the line straight perpendicular from your slits to the screen here, theta is this angle here. Uh, between the straight line and the location you're interested in. So this is going to give us the angular location, so to speak, of the bright fringes. And when we just say fringe without saying bright fringe, we imply bright. Okay, to find the dark locations, sometimes called the minima, and the bright ones are called the maxima, is the intensity of this pattern over here. You got the same thing over here, and then we want m plus one half, so this is going to remember make those path lengths between the two different uh, sources be off by exactly half a wavelength. So that is going to give us the dark locations. And then the third equation we had was x equals L lambda m over d, where here we have the uh, linear location as opposed to the angular location of those bright and dark spots and this changes with the distance to the screen L here. This does not change, the screen is further, it doesn't change the angle but it does change the height up on the screen. Alright, so here I would start out making a list of everything you know and see what equation is going to work best. Fourth order fringe, so that tells us M equals 4, 710 nanometer light. So um, since we typically deal with visible light, because that's the easiest to measure because we can see it, and the visible range is about 400 nanometers to about 750 nanometers. So we're going to be dealing with nanometers a lot, and that is uh, times 10 to the negative ninth meters. Technically, you can leave it in nanometers when you plug it into this equation, as long as everything else is nanometers and your answer will come out in nanometers if that's what you're looking for. But I kind of like to switch everything to meters and uh, it's easier to not get tripped up that way. Okay, we have an angle of 16 degrees, so that's theta, 16 degrees, and we want to know how far apart are the slits, so that is D. That's our definition for D. So we're dealing with, um, by just saying fringe, we're talking about bright spots. So this equation here is also to the bright spots, by the way. So we've narrowed it down to those two. And by looking at the information we have, we have angular information rather than length information. So we're going to be using this guy up here. And we can go ahead and plug in D is what we're looking for. Sine of theta, we have theta equals m which is 4 times 710 times 10 to the negative ninth. Plug that into our calculator, nice and easy, and we get uh, 1.03 times 10 to the negative fifth, and I convert it to meters, so those are the units that I get out. Voila. All right, one more, and then we'll be done. Here, again, we're going to start out listing the information we have. We have wavelength of 565 nanometer light, so that's times 10 to the negative ninth meters. Falls on two very narrow slits that are that far apart, so D equals 0.05 millimeters. I am just going to slap a times 10 to the negative 3 on there so that my units match. Trying to figure out how many millimeters are in a nanometer would be trickier if I tried to keep one of those, so this kind of makes it easy. Now here I'm given that the screen is 2.4 meters away, that's what we call L, so 2.4. And I want to find how far apart are the fringes, so the distance of the fringes, that's going to be X, so that's what I'm looking for, uh, at the center of the pattern. So I'm not finding X, uh, essentially I'm finding a delta X, I'm not finding X to a single bright spot. Uh, I want to know the spacing from one X to the next. So if I think about what's going to go on with M, I could have M equals 0 and find an X value, and then I could have M equals 1 and find an X value. 
or between 1 and 2. The point of saying at the center of the pattern is that's where we can use uh, this equation. If you remember, this was derived from a small angle approximation, L lambda m over d. So this is technically not true if they are far from the center, because then you get large angles. But as long as you're near the center, then this is going to be uh, really close to accurate. And before we, you know, I guess you could plug in one and plug in the other and find it, but if we think about what's going on here a little bit, uh, delta x is going to be L lambda, I'll just call it M2 over D, minus L lambda M1 over D. So I can factor all this stuff out, and I get L lambda D times M2 minus M1. And as long as they're successive fringes, so 0 and 1, I guess 0 here, 1 there, or 1 and 2, this is just going to come out to be 1. So whenever you're finding the distance between fringes, don't find the actual location to two fringes. Essentially, all you need to do is use this equation here, and you're going to plug in the number 1 for m, and that will give you the distance between adjacent fringes. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so let's jump down here. I'm going to find x. I guess you'd call it delta x. Uh, L is 2.4. Lambda 565 times 10 to the negative ninth. M is 1. So not get messed up with that stuff. And then we're going to divide by d, 0 0.05 times 10 to the negative 3. These are both in meters, so those are good. This is also in meters, so those meters will cancel out. We'll be left with these meters. And our good friend, the calculator, gives us 0 0.027 meters. If you notice, these things are incredibly small. This is actually fairly measurable. I mean, that's 2.7 centimeters, right? So that's reasonable. It's also quite a bit easier to measure uh, a length like this between two bright spots than to measure the angle between the uh, line down the middle and that bright spot. So this is uh, really useful if you're actually doing an experiment regarding the double slit experiment. So this is really useful if you're actually conducting the double slit experiment and want things that are readily measurable. Okay, see you next time.